Hello, this is Charlie. I'm going to show you how to use my DP Neoden Force ULP for Eagle. Uh, this script was originally written by Ian Lesnar of Dangerous Prototypes a few years ago for the TM220A, which is also a Neoden pick and place that we have. Uh, we modified it a little bit, Jams modified the GUI for it, and then I modified it for the Neoden 4. It's still kind of a work in progress, but um, it's mostly working. I've been able to successfully export a few things, so I'm going to show you. One of the peculiarities about how the Neodin works and how to use the script to do that. So the first thing we have to do is when we output the CSV from Eagle, it's going to be an Eagle coordinates. So when it's loaded into the machine, it'll still be an Eagle coordinates. And for it to be able to move by fiducials, which is what we're going to do here, the fiducials in Eagle have to be physically addressable on the machine. In other words, if the coordinates was minus 10 and minus uh, 10 in the X minus 10 in the Y in Eagle for a fiducial, the machine can't move to a, a negative coordinate. So that's no good. So what we have to do is we have to move our board in Eagle far enough into the area of the Neodin um, so that you can move the head and the camera around so that it can find the fiducials. So what I do is I just move the board up and to the right enough so that the head and the camera can move to the correct place. So basically the first thing you want to do is just do group this, select the whole thing, use the move command, move the group, and then just kind of move it up, and I just move it about here. And of course about here is not terrifically useful, but you know, let's look at the X, Y, so 3683 millimeters for that first fiducial. Here's another one here. And we have another one down here as well. You know, it's best to use just two. Personally, I prefer to use three because then if the PCB is skewed uh, for manufacturing, which is common, uh, we can use those. But Neodin recommends use two. So let's stick with that at the moment. So basically, all I've done is made sure that the coordinates for all of the components will be able to be physically moved to on the camera and the head in the Neodin, even though they will not be in the right place. So now we're going to fix that. So the next thing we need to do is just run the script um, and here it is so here's the parts list that we're going to export and this is a very cut down example it's just what I happen to be doing last here is the different real assignments this has already been assigned so you can pick here what you want them to be uh, the first one is nothing um, and also the way the Neodin works is the first component in the list is the reference for everything so it calls it left bottom but it's not really left bottom it's that first component is the anchor everything else is relative to that so to take care of that i wanted my fiducials to be the first and so i just renamed it with an a so a fiducial one and two and three and then i marked them to real one which isn't assigned currently for us and then i just pick the other ones just to go over a quick overview you can go through here and set all of the parameters that you can in the neodym software so, you know, you type in the real name, you choose your nozzle number, if you know which nozzle it's going to pick up with. Um, the pick height, so that when it picks up from the feeder, that's where it goes down to. Pick delay, how long it waits for it to settle for any kind of vibration. Place height is when it puts the component down onto the board. So these are 805, so they're at 0.5. Um, the place delay is after it's placed it, how long to wait before moving the head, or how long to drop before moving the head. And then the move speed, um, 50% is what I've got currently set in here. And these are the feed rates for the feeders. So again, 805 um, would be four clicks. And then the rotation of the part to bring it being into uh, a neutral space, as it were. And all of the other reels on here, are on the including the special ones. So you can you know flick through and edit all of the different reels. I've only done partial on here because um, there's a lot of reels <laughs> that we're not using yet. Uh, you can see an example here of one that's got the nozzle number two. Uh, and this one is actually a larger part, so it should be eight. Okay, but anyway, this is not really an overview of how this software works. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, so the next thing to do is go back to CSA, CSV export, hit OK, and that's what actually does it. So it says it's written it out. I'm going to load that file in just to take a look at it. And there it is. 
So this is the list of the stacks, so basically the feeders. And you can copy and paste this into the ULP once you've created your own stack. So once you've got your own stack, where it says load nullspacelabs.com standard stack, you can replace this inside the ULP or save it into a USS file and then load it in so that you can have multiple stacks or you can have a default stack if you always use the same stuff. Um, the rest of it is just kind of going over like where the different producer marks are and so on and so forth. But this is the part here for our components. And as you can see, they're in the position for Eagle. So now what we're going to do is transfer this CSV to the machine. So I'll do that and then we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're in the pick and place software. Uh, we're going to import our test one. I call it testing DP. Obviously, you call it what you want. And now I'm going to edit it. And what we have here is the list of the coordinates here. Uh, and that's the XY position there from Eagle. So these are not going to be correct for the machine. Uh, the left bottom set and the panel are set to the first component, as I said earlier. In the Neodent software, the first component is the reference anchor point for everything else. It calls it left bottom because in the panel it is the left bottom panel. But for the PCB itself, it doesn't mean the left bottom component or the left bottom of the PCB. It means where your first component is. So this XY coordinate, uh, this XY coordinate, this XY coordinate should all be the same. Um, there may be some differences later on in panels that um, not, not that may change that, but for the moment that is how it will work. Uh, what we want to make sure, we're using the magnetic fixture, it's in manual mode. Um, the producers are set to single, not panelized, not manual. And if we look here and hit align, you'll see that they're wrong. Because they're in eagle coordinates, not physical machine coordinates. So what we want to do is click up here, hit align again, and you'll see it's the same position. So hit cancel. So now we're going to use change to current position, and that's what moves everything over, and it will change all of these coordinates to match um, where the PCB is on the machine. I've already loaded a PCB into the machine, so let's hit change current position. Um, it's asking me if I want to do that, and I'm saying yes, and it's saying that things will change because um, you know, you're about to do that, and that's what we want. So hit yes, and now the machine is going to look for the fiducials. It can't find them, it's as expected because they're not there. So we're going to say yes and go to manual mode. I'm going to switch to mass vectors and then I roughly know where it is. So I'm going to pop in and see how close I got. So now I'm just going to use the mouse here to find the fiducial. And this board's already been placed because I ran out of blank PCBs that were set up because I ran like 150 of them with them yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to hit auto align. And one of the interesting things is, of course, because it's doing auto line, your fiducial shouldn't have anything around it. And we kind of do on a couple of them, so you'll see it on the next one. But here I am, I've got the coordinate, it's auto aligned, it's safe. It's going to look for the second fiducial and fail again. So I'm going to say try manual, yes. Now it's going to go to this coordinate here, 6530, 9235. You'll note was the uh, position of the second fiducial. Same thing, go back to mouse vectors. And then move it around, switch back to visual field, and a little high, so we'll go down here, and you'll see the fiducial that isn't correct. And you may even see the machine pick up the wrong one, so I'll show you that just so you can avoid it. But you really don't want anything around this fiducial, you want it to be nice and clear, and even though it is, to the machine vision, it's, it's not as clear as it is to us. So we're going to mark it and then hit auto line and see what happens. And it found the wrong one. So I'm going to manually do this. This is why you should not design your fiducials like this. There shouldn't be anything around here. You can set the size of the fiducial it's expecting to see, but these holes are roughly the same size. Okay, so now I've done that. I've got the new fiducial position here. I'm going to hit save. All the coordinates have changed. So let's check it. Let's go to this, again this is already placed, so there should be a, yep, there it is, hit cancel, uh, go to here, there it is, okay great, so now the um, position of the visuals is correct, so what we have to do now is, these are no longer correct, left bottom 
and panel are no longer correct. This is correct, this is correct, but these are no longer correct because they haven't been updated. So what we want to do now is take this out and put in 236.62 because that's the first, um, again, the first component. And 203.76. Okay, so what we need is the XY position of SMD1 to be in left bottom. So those should be the same values. Check them in the R, and now you hit create panelizers because this is wrong too. Okay, great. We're not using panelize, that's what that was about, and it was telling me did I want to do the angle detect, which I'm not. I'm going to leave that at the moment. So there we go, that should be it, so let's try it. So again, this board's placed, so I'm just going to go through the single steps. All right, so I'm going to cancel out. Now I'm going to mount it, and then I'm going to single step it. I'm going to look at the nozzles. Now it's finding the potential. There it is. There's a second one. Did it find the right one? It did. Great. And now it'll go away to the components and pick things up. But I don't want it to do that because this board's already placed, so I can't show you the full run. But again, that's not what this video is about. So I'm going to hit stop, exit, and that's it. Thanks for watching.